Okay, let's talk about the GED exam and specifically three steps that you should be taking in order, uh, um, the first three steps you should take in order for you to pass as quickly as possible and as effectively as possible. And what I mean by that is if you're going to take the GED and learn everything that's on it, you might as well do it with the spirit of increasing your education. So in other words, you know, it's not just about, well, I need to just get a passing score, but it's about actually improving yourself for the long run. I think that's a much, much better strategy, especially if you are using uh, the GED as a baseline to further your education, maybe college or some other training. So when you look at it that way, you want to start um, shifting your perspective from just a simple passing score to really improving yourself for the long run. Now, I'm going to give you three steps here uh, that we're going to cover that I think will get you going, you know, in the right dire direction quickly, okay, and effectively. And for those of you out there, I'm assuming you know what the GED is. It's a high school equivalency exam. And um, uh, it's, well, it was changed back in 2014 to be, a lot of people think it's more difficult. That's kind of uh, subjective. I think it has become more challenging. Uh, the number one area where people seem to struggle with on a GED is math. Um, so I, that's my specialty. Um, and if you're looking for some uh, GED math help, you might want to check out my uh, GED math accelerator course. I'll leave the link in the description. Um, of this video if your trouble is with math. But what I'm going to talk about here um, are three steps that you need to know no matter what. So if you're just starting out, this is going to be a great video for you. All right, let's get right to it. So the first thing is get sold on your, yourself, get sold on you. Okay. So you're saying, well, what does that mean? Okay. I'm talking about the GED. I need the steps to pass. Maybe you're thinking about go get a notebook, you know, get some pencil and paper, get a calculator, or whatever the case is as a, the first step to pass. No, that's not the first thing you need to do. The first thing you need to do is start believing yourself. You have to get sold on you. You have to tell yourself that you can do this, that you should do this, that you're deserving of this. Probably the number one reason that I see people delaying themselves in order to take the GED is some sort of hidden insecurity. If you think about it, um, you know, I'm speaking to somebody on the other end of this video, and if you're looking to take the GED, that means something went wrong with your education early on. You didn't finish your high school education, maybe for no reason of your own, okay? Uh, you could have been in a bad school, any number of different scenarios, or you made a, a mistake, you made uh, you're a different person then you you <clears throat> you made bad judgments we you know we all do that when we're young however the consequences what i've seen throughout the years and just working with thousands of students that carries a lot of emotional uh, baggage for people a lot of insecurities a lot of self doubt um and it's pretty significant it really is uh, a lot of people Unless you get to really know somebody who, ha who hasn't completed their high school education, you really don't even know how much that Im impacts them deep down inside. Um, so this is <clears throat> your biggest leverage on yourself. It's your, it should be your biggest motivation, but it's the biggest thing you, you're going to have to overcome. You're going to have to start believing in yourself. I'm going to tell you right now, right off the bat, I don't care what your starting point is in terms of your education. You can pass the GED. You can go on to college and get a degree. You can do all these things. And I'm not just being um, overly positive here. Believe me when I tell you, you, you can pass. But if you don't have the fuel in your emotional tank, you know, for your self-motivation, then you're not going to be able to sustain yourself to do all the other things that are required to pass. So <clears throat> you got to get sold on yourself. Now, how do you do that? Well, I would say... You you have to kind of go on faith, okay? So first off is you just have to have some faith. A lot of people will say, well, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it type of deal. Well, yeah, when I actually have it in my hands, then I'll believe it was actually true uh, to, to, to get my GED. Now, you can't, you can't operate. You have to reverse that, okay? When you believe it, that's when you're going to see it. You have to have faith. You got to start saying... 
I can do this, okay? And you have to strengthen yourself. You also want to have clarity. You need to be clear on why you need to pass, right? Make it non-negotiable. Hey, I need to pass because I want to be a, a better role model for my kids, or I need to, I'm, this is one thing I'm going to do and take care of for more, uh, for a lifetime goal. Whatever the case is, you have to build up an inventory of reasons and and really focus on all the wonderful qualities about yourself. And you got to forgive yourself too. Now, let me put this over here. Forgive. I think this is um, appropriate for a lot of people. Maybe not everybody. And what I mean by forgive is a lot of people have guilt about the past. You know, something went wrong. I was terrible. I should have done this. You got to forgive yourself. You got to let all that go because that's like a negative uh, thinking uh, cycle. That's not helping you. Okay. We all make mistakes, right? But yours truly on other than I've made plenty of mistakes. Okay. Yeah. I went to college. I did a lot of things and I'm proud of in my life, but if I wanted to get myself very depressed, I could just simply write down all the mistakes that I've done in life. Okay. Anybody can write down all the mistakes they've done and things they could have done better. And guess what? If you focus on that, that's where your energy is going to go. You're going to, you're going to become depressed. So you need to start, you need to let that go, whatever happened <clears throat> in terms of early on with your education, forgive that part and just reset everything. Okay. And another thing, uh, uh, you need to do is just really, uh, start liking yourself. You got to increase your self image. Okay. So your self-confidence, I'm going to call it self-ego, <clears throat> whatever that might mean for you. Uh, it could be maybe dressing a little bit nicer, whatever that might. When you look in the mirror, you got to start liking yourself more. Okay. Maybe you're already there, but whatever you can do marginally to help build your self-confidence will go a tremendous amount of way. And by the way, the, the, what I'm talking about here, these steps, these are transformative steps. They're not just going to apply for the GED. They're going to apply throughout your entire life. But because so many people <clears throat> want to pass the GED, but they don't, or they don't make it, or they pass it once and they fail, and uh, and then they don't go any further, you know, uh, you have to really have the emotional strength to to get going. And when you have that, believe me, when you're that strong of a person, you can be able to you get to the GED and so much more. Okay, so that's the first thing you have to do. All right. Now, the second thing is, <clears throat> I'm just going to talk about some more practical type of uh, tips here. Not to say that the first uh, step, that the first tip isn't practical. The step, this step here isn't practical, but it's a little bit more abstract. Now, this second thing here is, what are you studying from? This is a very specific type of uh, step. You got a question. What is your study plan? Okay. Uh, do you have a book? Are you studying from a book? Are you studying from YouTube? Are you studying from the internet? Are you studying uh, from your best friend? Are you going to adult education class? <clears throat> you need to ask yourself, what are you going to study from? Now, how do you answer that question? Well, you have to answer that question in terms of what is best for you, okay? Like, how do you learn? How do you learn best? How do you learn best. Okay. So you may not know how you learn best, but it, well, it's pretty obvious, right? Just think about the things that you know, like whatever you skills that you know currently, how did you learn them? <laughs> you know, did you learn them by on the job training? Did you learn them by watching a bunch of videos and practice? Think about the way you kind of prefer to learn. Okay. Cause you are going to, you're going to have to learn a significant amount of um, material for the GED. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Okay. See, that's another, another thing you have to shift your perspective. All right. You'd be like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to learn this, that, this, 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 that you're already setting up all of these negative perceptions about the exam. Like, why would you be negative about learning and improving yourself? And you're like, well, I don't need to learn history. I don't need to learn uh, English and math. I'm, when am I going to use that? You see, that's the attitude that gets so many people in trouble. Listen, how do you know what the value of an education is if you don't have that education currently, right? So think about that. It's kind of crazy. How can you question someone who has a lot more education than you and says, listen, it's valuable to have a lot of education because, you know, helps you with critical thinking, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, and you're saying, no, I don't need that. Well, how, how do you know? You're not in a position to even make that assessment because you don't yet have that education. I'm going to tell you, most people who go through the process of developing their education probably don't regret it. You know, you can say, well, some people go to college and be like, yeah, I, I shouldn't have gone to college. Um, you know, I could have done better off in this direction in life. Yes, maybe true, but I'll tell you something. Uh, just learning more and proving yourself is always a good thing. So <clears throat> when you think back on it, kind of get back to this uh, second step you should be taking, you need to get excited about learning. So which mode of learning is going to keep you you know, the most engaged? Maybe it's a video. Maybe it's an actual teacher. So really think about it, but the one thing I want to stress is make sure you're, you're learning from a credible source. And you can have some sort of hybrid program as well. So for example, let's say you like my teaching style and you want to learn math from me. Maybe you could take my math course and then maybe use a textbook or um, uh, join an adult education class for the GED. Or you could uh, join an ad adult education class uh, for the GED. Um, and supplement that with a, a textbook, you know, maybe a book that you bought on Amazon or um, maybe a course like mine to help you out. There's a number of different ways. There isn't one way to study from it, but there is a way that's that's probably going to be the best uh, way for you. And you're going to have to determine that. But just make sure that you use credible sources. That's my biggest thing. Make sure you're learning from somebody um, who really knows what they're talking about. Okay, so clearly before you get going, on study for the GED, you need to get your study material correct. All right, let's talk about this last step here, and that is to get organized. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean get organized in a lot of different ways, okay? You need to get your time organized. You're going to have to, you know, put, a, put aside significant study time to pass the GED, okay? So for, like, if you're looking for shortcuts, this is what's going to get you in trouble. If you're looking for like, oh, I just need to, uh, you know, I only got a couple hours and then I got to pass this GED. That's basically gambling. You're hoping. And if you do pass, um, well, you know, we might have served, you know, you might have gotten your GED and you maybe can move on for your life. And for some people, that might be enough. But that's not a good approach. When you have the t um, when you have enough time to prepare for the GED properly, Okay, without gambling, by going to the test and just hoping you pass, you're going to have to set aside time. So you're going to have to get your life organized. Okay. Another thing I'm going to put down here is you're going to get, have to get your focus or your thinking organized. I talk a lot about this in my um, videos. And if you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to do so. I do a lot of um, uh, videos just to help people, you know, not only with math, but really with their thinking, because I've learned along the way, being a math teacher for many, many years, that the secret to, to getting a student to learn is really working on their mindset. Once they, because there's generally, there's a lot of barriers, especially if someone's struggle, struggling with a particular topic. If I can change their mindset around or thinking or focus around everything else goes so much easier. So you have to get your thinking organized, your focus organized. What do I mean by that? Are you distracted? Are you, you know, are you uh, watching too much news? Are you too immersed in social media? Do you have too many high maintenance friends that have nothing but drama, you know, that just bring you down? All those type of things. That's super important. You're going to have to kind of put the focus, get your life organized so the focus is on you. And, and and what you want out of life, okay? So you're going to have to take this kind of mental inventory to uh, to really kind of get going. Now, the last uh, part of being organized is really truly being, quote-unquote, organized in terms of uh, your your papers, your study notes, et cetera. So I'm putting down you got to be neat and you got to have good notes, all right? So if you're not used to taking notes, well, you're going to have to learn, okay? So just be patient with the process. But you need, if you're, when you're learning, you simply can't just watch and learn. For example, let's take math. If I demonstrate a bunch of math problems, you just watch them, okay? You know, just watch the videos all day, you're not going to really learn. You, you might understand, but your mind's not going to retain. So therefore, the only way you're going to learn 
and to help retain this is through the process of note taking. It is critical, okay? Not, not only in math, but all the other subjects. So you're, you're going to need good notes, even if you have study material, okay? So when you're getting organized, make sure you have the materials that you need. Some, uh, you, know, you can go to uh, something like Walmart and buy a bunch of cheap notebooks. It's perfectly fine, and buy some pencil, pencils, paper, uh, pencils, pens, flashcards, whatever you know is best for you. You're going to have to learn how to take notes. And if you're not the neatest person in the world, and this is a big problem for younger ages where students are really, you know, sloppy, including myself, <laughs> but you, you have to learn. So if you're not too neat right now, generally speaking, I don't know why it is, uh, uh, females, women, girls, they always seem to be neater than, than the guys, us guys here. Uh, but I've had to learn along the way that it is really important. So being organized, you really want to be neat. you got to be able to read your writing. So if you're not that neat, slow down and try to improve in that category. It's going to really help you. Okay, so if you're just starting off uh, and you got to get your GED, then you should be excited. I really you know, believe strongly. I don't do these videos <clears throat> uh, based upon, let's say, you know, I'm, I'm guessing. This is from experience, years and years, decades of experience, not only in, in teaching and mathematics, but really working with pe with people and my own personal experience and really, you know, uh, uh, seeing what truly works and what has the most impact. So if you can kind of think about these three categories here and see where you're at with them, <clears throat> I think you're going to go a lot further and uh, faster. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. So hopefully, uh, you know, you're getting something out of this, you know, you got something out of this video. Um, I have a lot more videos on it. So um, I, you know, uh, hope that you become a subscriber to my channel. If you do uh, elect to subscribe, please hit that uh, bell notification so you can get my latest videos. And a thumbs up for this video if you liked it, would certainly be appreciated. And leave me some feedbacks. I get a lot of comments on my videos, which I truly um, are grateful for. Uh, it's the only way I know if I'm, uh, you know, resonating with you. Although it's difficult for me to respond to these comments, I do read them. <clears throat> and um, it's a it gives me a gauge on how I'm doing and what I can do better to help you out. So with that being said, I thank you for your time and have a great day.